Cristobal de Bila. Welcome, my friend. Hello and welcome in. It is time for the Waffle Mafia podcast once again. So I am your host, Aaron Johnson, Lucky Legend, uh, the Wiz, the Wizard, whatever you want me to be. Uh, welcome back for another week of talking with me. So got a couple of things to talk about tonight. Got some big news, of course. Uh, pre-orders and uh, some of that stuff too. Going to do the weekly waffle wrap up too. Talk about the stuff that we did this past week, and then of course the things that are coming up this week for the Waffle Mafia and all things Masters of the Universe. So everything, this is the place for your Motu fix. All things Motu, please check out the Waffle Mafia podcast if you have never done so before. If you're listening now, obviously you're already in. Uh, if you're listening later, come listen again. So uh, there it is. Let's start this thing off. A little pause for the calls. I want to give a shout out to everybody who jumps in and says something, y'all. Of course, we give away pod spots. Y'all learn what those are too. If this is the first time that you've come over and made it do what it do. What's up, Kimberly Power Black? What's going on, girl? What's up, James Manning? Man, Lord, what's up, E-Daddy? What's happening? This is early. Agreed. We had to get up in here and talk a little bit about He-Man Steed. So tonight, topic of the podcast, going to talk about Battle Cat. And we'll get into Battle Cat here in a few minutes. But first, obviously, we've got to get into the discussion that has erupted on the page in the last few minutes, <clears throat> dealing with with Super 7, their releases, and the things that are now available for pre-order. So, uh, what's up, Draven's here. What's up, Draven? What's going on, my dude? What's happening, my buddy? Stormy Blue, that's my stage name. Don't you forget it. <laughs> I'll leave you blue, baby, out in the cold. Oh, man. Some of the conversations I have with you all are just solid gold. Let's see. What's up, Mandingo Dime? What's going on? What's up, Craig Ryder? What's going on, dude? Alexander Kent. Hello, hello. Yeah, so um, let's jump right into Super 7, yo. So uh, the pre-order, shared the link earlier. If you haven't seen uh, the stuff going on, the pre-order stuff with Super 7, I don't know where you've been. You've obviously not been in the Masters community because that stuff, uh, anytime something drops, it erupts across nine or ten pages all at the same time. Um Luckily, I think we were we were pretty quick on it. I think the only person that really beat us to it was Paul Rudman at, over at his special place. And so big shout out to uh, Paul Rudman, Ruddy Buddy. Um, I didn't see it at your place, so I didn't steal it from you. I was actually uh, scrolling through the web and just happened to catch uh, a notification from Super 7. So uh, pull that up, Super 7 store. Uh, added the link to the page. So, of course, in the link, you've got the link to the pre-orders. Pre-orders are open until May the 15th. The way that that works, you can order these things individually. You don't have to order them all. Of course, the, pre -open, the pre-orders are also open for the PowerCon exclusives. So we've got Driel, Montork, we've got um, Spike Orr, and then we've also got Chopper. So that pre-order is also out there for the PowerCon exclusives as well as now a pre-order open for Stridor, and they throw in a new pre-order for the five and a half vintage figures, so or vintage style figures. We won't say vintage figures, but what's interesting is with the vintage figures, well, what's up, Ruddy? What we were talking about just a minute ago, and this was kind of the conversation that was going on throughout the page. It was really fun because as that was erupting, we were just kind of speculating and throwing different ideas out there and what could possibly be going on. So one of the things that we didn't expect was we didn't expect to see the five and a half figures pop up for a pre-order and also be in a collector's two pack. Now, that did cause some disruption because some folks feel that the price point is a little bit high. I agree if we are basing it on what Funko did with uh, the Mortal Kombat figures or the, what they will be doing with Thundercats line, yes, it, it is not the $10 figure that you can get at GameStop. However, uh, as far as it goes for me, um, I, I think the price point is okay. Uh, $45 for a collector two-pack that has, you know, the sweet old school blister and it's sort of in that, uh, you know, in that package, uh, that blister pack where you can see, 
the figures in there. So that is very reminiscent of some of the packs, uh, the old pack ins where you had the two packs uh, or the vintage play sets where you would have like Battle Cat packaged in with uh, Battle Armor He Man or a Railer He Man or something to that effect. So it was a very cool look. It's something cool that Super Seven's done. You've got He Man and Skeletor, of course, together, TV villains. Um, I think they were still playing off that whole as seen on TV thing. I think somebody thought that was a very cool idea. And it seems as if they're playing along that line. So we have evil villains or TV villains, uh, He-Man versus Skeletor. And, uh, of course, you've got She-Ra and Hordak. A uh, couple of complaints. There's a couple of complaints about the faces. But more so, I think the product looks good. I love the articulation because it is one point more, or I guess you'd say two points more articulated than the Funko figures. Um, and I don't have an issue with what Funko's doing, but to be honest, if I'm going to get something that is reminiscent of the vintage line and done in a five and a half scale, I want it to be like the vintage and be made like the vintage. So seeing that throwback to that old school blister pack was very cool to see that Super 7 is not necessarily lost sight of you know that old school feel and what we're looking for there it was very true with the ultimates uh that old school card back that blister was beautiful uh but you know it kind of went away and the hype surrounding that old school packaging went away until today when we saw that pop back up and oh man so beautiful um of course not to diminish the shine on stride or any because there's some things to talk about there what's up wendy what's going on we do need the Hero and Eldor 2-pack, and I don't understand that, Paul, because uh, as you and I and Stevie and uh, Derek and a couple other people were jumping in and talking uh, on the page, where did those go? Where did Hero and Eldor go? Where? Um, why wasn't that offered as a 2-pack? Also, what happened to the idea of Masters going to retail? I dug into that just a little bit after the fact, and I think somebody even posted in the comments. Uh, Pixel Dan had gone on record as saying that apparently that deal had sort of fallen through and that Super 7 was still looking for a retail partner, but they didn't have one at this time. So if that be the case, you know, and we are only slated to do the four, well, that makes sense that we throw them in the two packs. But wait, there was six. There was Eldor and... Uh, Hero. So, didn't see those in the two packs. Maybe those will still come. But it would make more sense to me that if they do plan on going to retail, that these two packs are more of an exclusive thing and just something done as fun, as opposed to if you were going to send He Man, Skeletor, She Ra, Hordak, your main figures out to a retail line, you would definitely want those to be packaged individually and they would have a much greater chance of selling individually as opposed to being put in the two packs. Typically, the Masters 2-packs were done after the figure had already released, and it was sort of a reintroduction of that figure in a bundle pack where you could get the two together. Let's see. What's up? The org did state that the figures will be released single-carded down the line, so that's good information. That's good to know so that we can get them single-carded down the line. How about Beastman? Uh, and who was the other figure? Man-at-Arms. So, yeah, there was a Man-at-Arms shown. And Beastman. So there's two more. So we maybe we'll see the resurgence of this two pack. Maybe they will see how this two pack goes, the pre orders for the two packs, and then hop in with the Hero Eldor. Or maybe that's them deciding whether they should do that in a two pack or do it in a single pack just to see how these go. What's up, Vaughn? What's happening, brother? Uh, yeah, so that that's pretty cool that they dropped that on us today because I don't think any of us were quite really expecting for that to happen. Uh, but the big thing that happened that I don't think anybody was expecting to happen, and maybe this is smart on Super 7's part. I don't know that this was initially part of the plan, and maybe I'm wrong. And uh, Ruddy and I were talking about it earlier. I, I don't suck the teat of the mother wolf. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not Super Seven's biggest hoorah, hands down supporter. However, if you go back and listen to a lot of my stuff, I'm very, I'm very much for Super Seven because you know it's kind of like you want your kid to go out and do good. And since they're playing the sport that we love, we definitely want them to be able to go out and hit a home run. We don't want them striking out. So the truth is, you got to pull for Super 7. Yeah, some of the stuff pisses us off, and a lot of things that 
is a way that we would wanted it to be or a way that we would wanted it to look. We don't get it. But the truth is they are still out here and going to bat for our property and trying to throw some things out there. Does that mean that we should just suck the teeth of the mother wolf and just drink whatever we're given? No, we don't necessarily have to just drink the Kool-Aid. But the truth is uh, we, we do want them to do well. So what I thought was interesting was were they listening to the fans? Were they actually hearing what was being said about the helmet for Stridor? Did they see the uproar that they actually caused by releasing the total repaint of Night Stalker and not the actual helmet that we should get with Stridor? I think you guys saw what a complete and total uproar it was on the page. It definitely has been throughout the community. So whether Super 7's heard our cries or not, They've done the smart thing, and they've definitely corrected it. Now, was it corrected or was it in there already? Uh, don't really know. I'm safe to say, and I'm going to speculate, that it definitely was not part of the plan and has now been added to the plan as it could be something simple thrown into the packaging, much like they're doing with the Super 7 figures. Now, if you'll notice with Super 7 and our Classics figures, when there is an extra pack-in, whether it's an extra head or one of the extra pieces that would go along with it, they're being wrapped in plastic and simply thrown inside the bubble. So it's not as if there was a pre-carved or pre-molded place for that to fit within the plastic. So with that being said, let's say that the community gives you an uproar because you don't do the helmet quite right, it's easier in this case to simply make a new one, wrap it in plastic, and throw it in. Graylin is trying his best to join me for the podcast. Yes, sir. We'll pause it. We'll cause it. We'll keep getting it in. Because real quick, we got to talk about old Battle Cat, my friend. So about halfway, let me get Graylin. Let's bring him in here. This is breaking his world. Come on, son. Come on, bud. Come on in here with Dad. Come on in here. Let's talk on the podcast. We can't have a crime, baby. That's never good. Come over here. Let's talk to everybody. You was wanting to talk about Battle Cat because you really do love Battle Cat. So look up here. Say hi, everybody. Say, gosh, I sure do love Battle Cat. Do you like Battle No. Do you like Battle Cat? No. Can't do that either. Here. Oh, look. Want to hold Battle Cat and talk about him? Who is this? Battle Cat. Don't want him. You want the remote? Okay. Well, Daddy's got to do this. So look over here. Say bye bye. You got to go in here with mommy, okay? Come on. All right. Hop down. Here we go. Or you could just stay in here and play. Either way, Daddy's got to do some talking, okay? So we'll talk about this real quick. We'll talk about Battle Cat because you like him so much. Yes, sir. Can you come up here with me? Okay, you'll come up here and say it with me. So, <laughs> Graylin's going to join us for the podcast yet again. Uh, he, he does love this Mossy Castle Grayskull, so we got some good luck with that most of the time and keeping things chill. So, moving on from our Super 7 discussion, we are now moving into the Battle Cat discussion. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about with Battle Cat Battle Cat, the ferocious fighting tiger. So, Battle Cat, as most folks know, uh, is a reused toy from a previous toy line. Now, some folks know that, some folks don't, uh, but a lot of folks believe that it is actually from the Big Jim toy line. And it is from the Big Jim toy line, actually, the second time that Battle Cat was reused. But Mattel, always wanting to make the most bang for their buck and get what they can, wanted to reuse the molds, not once, not twice, but three times. So what we actually had was in 1971, I believe it was, was the first run that Battle Cat saw. Which, yes, was with Tarzan. And so we actually had a tiger in the Tarzan line that was this exact same tiger. Now, of course, as I said before, most people associate it with the Big Jim deal, so they know that the tiger was again used with a different paint scheme under Big Jim. So in the Big Jim line, 
uh, we had 12 inch figures. Graylin's trying to pause for the cause. We had 12 inch figures that it made a lot more sense to have this big tiger. However, when this tiger was going to be reused for Mattel and was going to be uh, used again for the Masters line, the tiger really didn't make a whole lot of sense because size-wise, the figures were about half the size of the figures that were a part of the Big Jim line. Is that right? You know about that? And so what they did was they tasked Mark Taylor with how could we reuse this tiger? In what way could he be retrofitted to where he would fit into the mythos and fit in as a part of the line? So what Mark Taylor did was he actually drew a concept for the saddle piece. So for just the saddle piece, and uh, this guy wanted to make a uh, hello here. It, this is the Traveler, and I don't know if you guys saw the picture of the Traveler there on the page. The Traveler was an wow. idea. Yes, sir. This Traveler was an idea. Uh, Mr. Zertouche had done it in another group, wanted to share it with us, and uh, wanted to get something going in Lucky Legends. So here is the Traveler. He will be going from house to house. He does have his Alcala boot knife, which is pretty sweet. He's got his gold bracers that he picked up from the goddess on his way on into Lucky Legends. So he, he will also be going out to someone else. So the idea being that he comes to stay with you. He visits for a couple of days. Uh, you take some pictures. You add to his story. You document uh, and then we're going to throw it into an album, sort of keep it all together and document the travels of the traveler and tell his tales. So there's the traveler. Uh, of course, he wrote in on Battle Cat today. Um, and here is a look at that beautiful saddle recreated in the classics version. But of course, that is going off of that Mark Taylor design that was originally done as a way for Mattel to, again, save money and reincorporate this particular tiger back into the toy line. Whew, let's pause for the calls after all that baby handling of mine. Graylin is distracted by his mommy right now. And so here you go. Now, when Cringer first came out, he was a little bit different, though. So we had Battle Cap. He came out in the original line with the vintage, of course, as you know, with most vintage figures, there are variants, and it is no different for Battle Cat. Battle Cat has quite a few variants, but one of the most important ones being the first release, sort of, of Battle Cat had the yellow stripes down the tail, which we do see recreated in the Classics version. So they paid homage to the original release of the Battle Cat. Now, we don't have the yellow mouth. However, on that first release of Battle Cat, what you'll see is you'll see the darker colored stripes, the stripes down the tail, and then also the orange mouth or the yellow around the mouth. Run across one of those bad boys. Keep it. They're hard to find. Uh, sported my Battle Cat shirt for tonight. I don't know if you can really even tell that, but there you go. It's uh, the good old Battle Cat, yo. So doing that for the for the battle shirt for tonight best cat ever you know what it'd be uh and then as they got on a little bit further down the line they changed up the colors you see so at some point we don't really know why uh we went to a lighter color on battle cat so here you can see the color comparisons this is the darker stripe and then of course i have the lighter stripe here so at some point switched over to the lighter stripe but originally the first run started out with the darker stripes and of course the striping down the tail and around the mouth um he's been released in a couple different ways he was originally released as uh the single cat you know in in the box so it was just battle cat had that beautiful rudy orbero artwork on it um he was also released in a two-pack with He-Man. And, of course, we have uh, just regular He-Man and Battle Cat as a two-pack. And then he was also released uh, again a little bit later uh, as a two-pack with Battle Armor He-Man and Battle Cat. Now, the interesting thing is in the first two depictions of Battle Cat, when we see him on that card back artwork, uh, we see first 
Battle Cat with no helmet. The helmet's sort of laying to the side, and there's He-Man uh, on Battle Cat's back. That's done by Rudy Orrero. What we also see is in this next one, uh, you've got He-Man coming up riding Battle Cat, and you've got Skeletor and Beast Man coming in the background, and they are also riding Battle Cats. So it's very interesting. If you look closely in that vintage artwork, you'll find that Skeletor and Beast Man also are riding Battle Cats. However, Man at Arms and I can't. I think it was Merman is also featured on there. Uh, they don't have cats, so they're they're just sort of in the background, one off, you know, running at each other. Where He Man is charging on Battle Cat, and then you see two green tigers uh, being ridden by Skeletor and Beast Man. Now, Battle Cat having somewhat of a history uh, or a, a telling of being a part of the Green Tiger Tribe. Uh, that is, uh, of course, in the telling of Cringer. Cringer goes all the way back to '82, so he was released in the DC comic series that it was the birth of Cringer. He was able to speak. He was Adam's friendly counterpart, uh, cowardly counterpart, and he's held true to that pretty much through the entire series. Filmation, of course, built upon it. Uh, in the early part of Battle Cat, we went into the, the Cave of Power, so he ran to the Cave of Power. He could be summoned by the sorceress, would run there, change, and uh, would come out as Battle Cat as opposed to later on in the canon filmation, of course, cementing the idea that He-Man raises the sword, shoots the bolt at uh, Battle Cat, and he transforms as well. In some of the earlier tellings in the UK stuff, in the Moto UK annuals, uh, he's described as being bloodthirsty, uh, always looking for a good battle. Uh, battle Cat never scared uh, to go into things head on. Very agile, razor sharp, uh, teeth, razor sharp fangs, uh, does not care to get in, and it even is it is even careful to mention the fact that he was bloodthirsty, which I thought was interesting. He mar had a marked thirst for blood and possessed the ability to speak. That's in the eighty two DC Motu comics, uh, eighty four German Motu audio plays. Uh, very much the same thing. Uh, not very patient, usually in a bad mood in the morning. Battle Cat sometimes put himself into a rage and had to be calmed down. He was nicknamed Old Tom Cat. Uh, he was a good friend to He-Man nonetheless. Uh, of course, we saw him in the 86 newspaper strips. If you have the newspaper strips book, uh, 2002 Mike Young Productions and MYP Productions, um, Battle Cat reimagined. He doesn't speak in that particular series, but still holds true to having the Cringer slash Battle Cat persona. And Cringer, very clever in that particular series. Not that he's not in filmation, but somewhat brave as well. Uh, they do point out in a couple of cases that there's a bit more Battle Cat in Cringer than Cringer believes. Uh, so he did have the one point where he was po uh, posing as Panthor and sneaking into Snake Mountain, so we saw that too. Of course, Motu Classics, so this would be the Classics figure there in all of its beautiful gloriousness. Oh my goodness, oh so sweet. Uh, so that uh, beautiful rendition done there by the Horsemen of reimagining the vintage line as they do with all the figures. The Classics canon differ in small ways. Uh, it says, it established that Battle Cat first appeared when Prince Adam united the two halves of the Sword of He. So, interestingly enough, in this particular telling of the canon, classics would like to refer to Prince Adam uniting the two halves of the Power Sword, and then at that point, then being able to call forth uh, Battle Cat. Uh, let's see what else we had. Uh, during He-Man's absence on Eternia, Battle Cat asked Ram Man and a small band of heroes to join him on a mission in hyperspace, so that was kind of odd. Um, other than that, really not a whole lot of difference within the way that Battle Cat has been portrayed over time. Um, of course, you guys know, we come over, we do the podcast, uh, we talk about pod spots. I still have to do pod spots for last week because we have not done those yet, but they will combine for pod spots for this week, and we will do the separate pod spots wheel for tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, Thirsty Thursday, come join me here. Uh, be a part of the Waffle Mafia. Let's make it do what we do. And guys, not only... <clears throat> Will we be waffling a little bit of Battle Cat 
I'm not going to make you guys get my sloppy seconds. So this old cat right here, he's just going to hang out here for a while. But I got this cat right here, and he is all the style. So we will do a mint inbox battle cat, and we will do that uh, tomorrow night for Thirsty Thursday. We will get that underway. Uh, let's see if we can get him out here and have a real quick look before we go of this beautiful card back in this green cat, yo. So there is a battle cat mint in box. We will get him underway. And then, you know, you can be mint on card or loose if you wanted to play. And then you can open it up if that's what you choose to do. So tomorrow night we will do the old battle cats, my dudes. So I'll see you guys tomorrow night for Thirsty Thursday, and we'll get that underway. Got something very super special coming up on Saturday to play. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention back there, but, hey, man, that's pretty cool. And uh, that's one of those figures that will make you drool. So I'll see you guys back tomorrow night for Thirsty Thursday. Y'all are the Waffle Mafia. I love all of y'all. Check out Pop culturenetwork.com y'all go to heman.org make sure you check out this super seven pre-order check out our other pages lord of destruction waffles most powerful waffles plow wheel go over and enjoy the toy masters of the galaxy check out that page too check out king he man and the masters of the universe kevin's buying selling trading trading buying selling check out the slime pit man that's another he man page just popped up out of nowhere check it out too I love each and every one of you. We'll see you next week. We'll make it do what we do. But come back and we'll see you tomorrow night. Graylin's in here. Get out of here. All right.